Welcome back to another acting analysis and tips for animators. And today I want to talk about only murders in the building. Season one, hopefully there's a season two, couple episodes that's going to cover facial dissipation, pose mirroring, set interaction. It's a bunch of stuff. It's going to be really cool. I love that show. So let's go. All right, I got nine clips here saved that I want to talk about. And before I do, as always, hi, my name is JD and I do acting analysis clips like these. I do animation analysis clips. I do animation lectures. I do rig reviews, product reviews. I do a bunch of stuff. It's the page at the beginning about my channel. Check it out. If you like it, subscribe so you don't miss any of my uploads. And if you don't subscribe, maybe you subscribe later. I don't know. I'll convince you later about it. But that's it for the pitch. Let's get to the sequences. And first up, it's going to be about those two. These are the main two characters. There's a third character as well. She's awesome as well. And it's about their older, right? They're on the older side. And why I love this is because of how they walk, how they run. It's not going to be the athletic running down, jumping over this. You have an older person hanging on to this. So this whole show is all about body mechanics for older people, how they interact with the set. There's just so much there about holding on. They're not jumping over. You have this here. They both have to hold on to it. It's really, really great. And I had to skip a couple of shots for some spoilers here. But at the end too, they see something, they go, oh, what's going on? And this, I love that at the end, he does that. So it's again a little reminder of if you have multiple characters, how do they relate? Like, What's their distance? Do they hold on to each other? Do they look at each other a lot? Is that this, what is the interaction between the two? And this show is just all of this and I love it. And given that they're on the older side, sometimes they're a bit grumpy. So you have this character asking him, hey, can you take a photo? He goes, yeah, of course. And he thinks that's going to be a photo of him because he's a, he used to be a famous actor. And then they go, no, no, can you take a photo of us? And look at his reaction there. Oh, <laughs> I love this. If this is your shot, like this reaction, uh, okay, I guess I'll take a photo. And then they tell him, hey, can you do, you know, portrait mode and landscape, blah, blah, blah. The reason why I'm having this here, actually, he doesn't do it, but I love this, that he has his fingers over the lens and he does take the fingers off to take a photo, but it, it would still be covered, technically. He takes the photo and then that's it with his pretend smile. And this is more about if you have a character with a prop, and again, I love props. It's not just because you have to add it to your characters and add constraints. It's going to be a pain to animate and everything. To me, this would be if this character asks, hey, can you take a photo? He could be, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And then just kind of slowly put the finger over the lens. They may or may not notice this. But it will tell us, okay, this character is not exactly the nicest person. And the prop is an extension of that. And then that, having the finger over the lens, if you play it backwards, you could animate it like this. Well, that's a bit obvious, but something a bit more subtle. But it's a, it's a prop that tells us more about the character. And this is why I love having characters within set and environments and using props. So if you have a prop, again, use it to tell us more about the character, not just because you want to have a prop. She's the other third character. She's also great. I love her in that. And this is about this moment here. Usually he's fairly, he's fairly broad in his movements, much more than him. He's kind of the, the straight man, taller, and the little guys are like, yeah, let's go a bit more flamboyant. But this is a great moment here where he is asking for money. Uh, he's with his son here. And it's, you can hear off screen, he asked him, how is it going? And it's happening right here during this. It's kind of a, a, a blend over here with the audio. And he has this, if you watch his face, um, good. <laughs> and that's just such a great hold of a facial dissipation before actually saying good. It's like when you have a character saying yes, you don't have to do yes. And I mentioned that before. So if you've seen this before, it's going to be an old hat, but you can do yes. So you can say it before and then say yes. You can also do no. <laughs> or are you not? Or kind of like Yes, like you can do a bunch of stuff. So this is a reminder of if you do have lip sync that it doesn't always have to be in sync. It doesn't have to be matching the audio all the time. Think about the pauses in between. What can you do before and after? There's more stuff about the after. But think about that and love his little good, like that long hell pose. It's great. And then he has a bunch of stuff where he looks away and he has kind of like, there's a lot of really nice subtle work in this sequence where you can see this little, the nervousness, how he can't really hold gaze, he has to look away. And he does the thing again where he has like, and then he says, in other words, so there's a lot of anticipation in terms of facial expressions before he actually says something. So again, great contrast for him being usually more on the broader side. That's my broader side, his little arms. Yay! That's my broader side character. And then in this sequence where it's a lot more subtle, because he's a really good actor. This one, they got the couple here, and she just came home, they had a little discussion, and she tells her, hey, what about a hello kiss? And she does this walk 
<laughs> towards her. And then she tells her, hey, you've been smoking, blah, 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 blah. I love that walk. Now, why am I showing you this? A, walks from A to B are hard. Like walk cycles, not to be like a walk in general is difficult. Now, if you have that down and you can do a walk, as always, think in terms of what kind of walk is it? Is it an excited walk? Is it kind of a comedic walk like this? And now this is really difficult. I totally understand that you're already worried about, I gotta do the mechanics of blah, 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 from A to B. On top of that, I gotta do this. But it's just a reminder of go beyond motion and movement and see if you can add personality to every move. Is it, is it a head turn? Is it an arm gesture? Is it a walk? It's just such a great moment where we just get kind of get to know her a bit more. Their interaction is just a great little moment that I love. And speaking of interaction, you got this here where the mom, it's her mom, she's kind of chastising them. And there's so much awesomeness here. Just that, the pose, his look, they have so many great expressions. Again, he's a bit more hmm, like the head up, turtle neck. There's always something about him. So she comes in and says, okay, mom. And it's also great too, in terms of like how they react. Just kind of that little slight look, but also her. Like, okay, maybe I said too much. It's, it's There's no audio. It's just pantomime with that. It's a great breakup in terms of this is how she was. She realizes the daughter is here. And you got that change in the face and a change in the eyebrows. You can see how she inhales. And then that tension that she had with this being on here, shoulders up, goes back down into this. It's just a great little moment too. But then it's this here where they realize, okay, maybe we should go. This is going to be awkward between the mom and the mother. And I love this here. <laughs> it's kind of like, hey, hey, let's go. And he has a slight push. And I love that little, what are you doing here? It's just a great, again, it's the thing of having two characters in your scene and how they relate. It, like I said before, how do they look at each other? How do they interact? Is it like a slight, he could do like a slight little tap, but this could be also more forceful push. It's just great when you have two characters, think about how they will relate to each other. And it just gives you as an animator so much to do. And speaking of interaction, here's a set interaction thing that is not really in here. I'll show you here. They say goodbye, he leaves. And then when you play this, there's no audio, but she locks the door and you can hear this, but you can't really see it. But again, this is not something you wanna copy. To me, this was the idea of let's pretend this is a date and this is whatever, you know, whoever is dating, each other here and that person didn't really like the date that person thinks this went really well gets out but then you can clearly see again the staging will be different that this character locks the door so to me it's again like a, a prop set interaction that tells us more it's almost like a reveal of a subtext where in the face they go oh this was great yeah nice to meet you maybe see you in a second date maybe and then the character closes the door going yeah 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 but then it's if you don't see the face again this could be actually this this angle you don't see the face. So how do you know how the character feels? You will see it by the character locking the door, realize, oh yeah, that didn't go well. That character doesn't want the other character to come back in or whatever it is. So that to me is why, again, why I love props and sets. So if you have a moment where you turn a character around, where you don't see the face, it will be acting through posture, body language, and then potential interaction and usage of props. This one is interesting because it's kind of rarely done in animation because it's, it's a tricky thing. She has this pose and as she says something, he agrees and it does the same thing. And in real life, the, the, the pose mirroring is something that actually that totally exists. And you, once you pay attention, you can't unsee it. And it's a tricky thing because if you do this, then what if, and if they're on the same, you know, on the same screen here, on the same uh, framing, they would have mirrored posing. Maybe then you would immediately go for me as a teacher, hey, watch out, did you, did you think about pose mirroring? Or are you just, you know, not thinking about variety and contrast of posing? So it's, it might not be the easiest thing to pull, to, to pull off. So if you're animating, ask your leader supervisor, that's something you could do, but I'll, and you can see this here, he's doing it earlier before the cuts. But is this something you can think about? Pose mirroring when two people agree, it is could be in a group. You can also see when multiple people talk, one person's talking and then the other person agrees, they will start mirroring poses. Again, it's something like the FedEx logo, that, the, the arrow in it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. But just as a reminder, something to explore in terms of posing. And again, said interaction. Why? Because this character can't hear. This whole episode was all about, or well, without dialogue. It's really great. And I love this knocking, leaving this, because for him, it's all about vibrations and you know lip reading and all that stuff. But for him, it's he would, sense through the vibrations that someone is walking up 
close through the weight uh, to the door. And I love that. So again, I saw like a broken record, but if you do have a set, this is how I would use it. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm that smart, but I love this. I love that we understand, oh, okay, he's listening. He tries it again, listens again, nothing's happening, let's go. That to me is just the right usage of a set. Because again, in animation, you don't have to have a set, you don't have to have a prop. There are so many shots out there, animation tests or in movies where, or TV shows or whatever, where the character is just empty. It's not an empty scene, but you know, with the movies, you have a set. But there's no crazy direction, it's just a performance, and it's really good. You don't need, obviously, sets and props. My point, as always, as I'm stressing, is that if you as a student are watching this and you're looking for ideas, to me, using sets and props will give you potentially more original ideas than your first couple is that you had. So if you have a character that's just doing something, you're acting things out, you're filming reference, imagine, okay, let's do the same thing, same action, same want or objective of your character, but now place the character on a chair, against the wall, getting out of a car, just to me, all those extra elements are gonna change your acting choices potentially. For sure, the posture, the, the posing, you might have asymmetry built in because of what you're holding on to, and all that is going to make your shot different and more original. And that's my whole point about all of this is that hopefully the series gives you ideas to make your shot more original, more unique, so that you stand out and get a job. That's like the end goal of it. And I'm ending it with this one just because <laughs> because of that look, them, like he has such a great thing. He pitches something and he he says this, he does that, that, it has a weird sound right there. It's so great. And it's this, it's the reaction of, wait, what? And I love that little shake. Like he kind of wakes himself up going, what? What did I just listen to? And he kind of looks around and he's totally confused and has that, it's great. So I want to end it on this just because all of them, her reaction too, and she's just slightly in pain. You're going, Oh, why? It's just so great. And this is this is why I'm ending on this. Basically, this show has so many different characters in terms of age, how they relate, how they react to the same situation. There's so much awesome reference. I can't recommend it enough that you watch the show if you can. And if you have it, uh, let me know in the comments what you think about it. The show is not done yet. I think there are two more episodes, I think. So this is not covering the whole season and hopefully no spoilers. But that is that for the show. And speaking of show, if you want me to show you how to do those things and help you, it's my pitch at the end. I have workshops you can sign up at any time. I can help you make your awesome shots even more awesome. Link in the description with all the information. Feel free to sign up whenever you want and start whenever you want. It's totally flexible. And as always, speaking of time, this is it. It's not super long, longish though, but thank you for watching till the very end. And um, that's kind of that for me. And I'll see you in my next, wait, wait, the pitch at the end. Like and subscribe, as always. Subscribe if you like, because you don't miss any of my uploads. I know, I, I didn't want to miss it. I just want to bring that out there. Subscribe, it helps my channel grow. And uh, if you don't, then that's okay too. But that's it now, thank you. And hopefully until the next clip.